Okay, so I'm doing this after, after, after. Um, I'm gonna take a sip of my tea, hold on. Tea, which is cold now, I should probably go heat it up. Um, but day 72 is Yule, the mortal and the immortal. During the winter solstice, the birth of the sun from the darkness of the longest night holds deep archetypal symbolism that can instruct us on the way to live our lives. The solar solstice activity symbolizes the interplay between the polar opposites of life and death, as well as the issues of mortality and immortality. In symbolic terms, the darkness of winter's longest night can represent our human mortal side. Just like our human body, the dark tide of midwinter eventually passes. What is born at the moment of winter's passing? Daylight, the sun is reborn. The light of day, and specifically the sun, are symbols that cross-culturally represent the immortal dimension. This is because the sun is a constant source of light in the heavens, which means that symbolically it is an import important light. The popular European myth of the Holly and the Oak King battle also represents this interplay between mortal and immortal. As we learned earlier, the Holly King represents the dark half of the year and the cycles of life or of death and return, while the Oak King represents the seasons of light and life. In their mythic battle, the Holly King relinquishes power to the Oak King at the time of the winter solstice. In essence, the symbols reaffirm to us that darkness gives way to light at Yule. The mortal yields to the immortal. Interestingly enough, it is only within the Western mythologies that we can find the two primal forces of life and death, mortal and immortal, in a state of conflict. This may well be the result of ancient Greek philosophies that portrayed spirit and matter as desecrate, separate, and conflicting forms. In contrast, Eastern myths and symbols express an understanding of natural interplay between the forces of life and death. Immortal and immortal, spirit and matter. Life and death, spirit and matter form a single continuum uh, in Taoist philosophy, for example. Familiar yin-yang symbol from the familiar the familiar yin-yang symbol from Asia also illustrates the two aspects of mortal and immortal in na in natural union and harmony. With light and dark energies wrapped around embracing one another, in essence, this symbol portrays polar opposites as being both two, that is to say distinct, and one, meaning that they are also indistinct. In the realm of spirit, there is no differentiation in all, all opposites collide and unify. On the everyday mundane level, differentiation is clear and distinct. In the spiritual realm, there is neither mortal nor immortal. There is only the constant, unnameable, unformed energy that is always ready to assume a new form. It may become a human being, a plant, an animal, a rock, or anything else that is ready to come into existence. In the ordinary physical realm, you can come to know the undifferentiated life energy through its many distinct forms. In today's magical workings, you will experience a dual, the dual forces of light and dark, mortal and immortal, residing within you. What you'll need, two 4x4 four four inch squares of paper, a red ink pen, dried holly or pine or other evergreen herb. And I only had, um, because, <clears throat> because it was not around actual Yule when I did this, I only had, um, what was it, I had... Fur. Um, dried powdered oak or a perennial herb such as lavender, a small burning vessel such as an iron pot. To begin, close your eyes and take several deep breaths. Relax your body completely. Imagine that you stand before two wooden boxes. One box is made of light colored wood, the other is made of dark wood. Open the dark wood box and you will find a single word that represents your mortal nature. This world represent, word represents the part of you that will pass th with time. Remember the word. Now open the light color box. Inside you will find a single word that represents your immortal nature. Remember the word. When you have seen both words, open your eyes. Use your pen to write the words, one on each 4x4 four four inch square of paper. Take a pinch of powdered oak or perennial herb and place it at the center of the paper with your immortal word written upon it. Now fold the, fold the paper into a light bun tight bundle. Take a pinch of the evergreen herb and place it at the center of the paper with your mortal word written on it. Fold this paper into a tight bundle. 
Use a length of string to tie the two bundles together. Light a match and set the two tied bundles on fire, allowing them to burn in the iron pot. Watch as the two aspects of mortal and immortal become one ash. Keep this magical ash in a small container or even plastic baggie if it's easier for future ritual workings. And I have the jar, I just did not bring it down. Um, like I said, I've done these, so um, redoing them on camera, um, I'm not gonna do uh, until we get to the days that we're on. And um, so um, I'm just gonna leave it. And I'm sorry if it's terribly boring. And I am continuously, I should be doing um, where I am in a video, but I kind of, I want to get your guys' opinion um, if you want them live, because then I can kind of interact with you as I do them, and that would be kind of neat. Um, so I've, I've put that uh, into rest respect as well. So. Um, I'm going to state it in another video. Uh, I'm probably just going to post a video by itself with a bunch of questions. Um, not a lot of people really respond, but um, I'm hoping kind of a few people respond because it's kind of important. But um, that was it for day 32. I'm going to do, or 72. Wow, that was going back away. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, day, s and then um, continue on from there. I'm going to try to get to day 75 out here. Um, maybe, maybe not, um, we'll see. I'm gonna go heat up tea right now, and then we'll get on to day 73. Blessed be and keep crafting, witches.